I think one of the most interesting things I'm seeing right now, and it's not the best news in the world for people who make you know, pure form supplements, is probiotics moving into food and into drink and into bread and into whatever you're gonna see. So for the first time in a long time, we've seen probiotic growth slow. We were up 17% two years ago, I believe, and now we're down around 10. But at the same time, we're seeing all this money going into food products and Good Belly just got big investment from a major food company. Things like that are gonna to continue to happen. So people have this awareness of the gut and this awareness of how the bacteria interacts with the rest of their body. Something that people in supplement industry were talking about three or four years ago is now being talked about all over the place. You're seeing that in the New York Times and, and other publications of you know, sort of record that people follow. So I think that interest in the gut is really important, and I think that it's going to expand to you know, be brought in in all these food different ways. But I think the next thing that could come from that that follows that is a better interest in prebiotics. I think the technology is better there, too, for the sort of the side effects, the sort of gas and other things that people think about when they think about fiber. But I've been telling people, you know, fiber is the next protein because most of us are getting enough protein and probably one out of ten of us is getting enough fiber. We're seeing prebiotics and probiotics put together in some formulas, you know, more than we've seen in the past. And I think that that's going to continue. There's a, you know, the, as people have more awareness of the gut, they're going to be a, more awareness of what works in the gut. And I think prebiotics have a really strong claim there that, you know, that's your best bang for your buck. So probiotics growth did slow in 2017 uh, at a, and slowed at a rate larger than we were forecasting and a lot of the industry was forecasting as well. So in 2016, growth was around 17%, whereas in 2017, growth slowed to about 10%. Again, I do want to note that 10% is still double-digit growth rate and is much stronger than the industry as a whole and still, for a lot of categories, considered to be quite a strong growth rate. But what we're seeing is a lot of questions raised as to why that growth is slowing. And, um, and what we're really seeing is that a lot of um, use of probiotics is moving moving into phase two of probiotics in our supplement market. So in phase one, I like to think we are seeing 25% growth, 20% growth, 17% growth, really strong growth as that category just took off. And I think here we've moved into sort of the second phase of that. So probiotics are becoming more specific. They're moving into very specific conditions, uh, very specific strains, very um, kind of just that second evo that evolution of the category. And then beyond that, at, growing into different delivery formats as well. So moving out of purely supplements and growing in snacks, beverages, bars, uh, and consumers are getting that from their food a little bit more so than supplements.